How did we end up here? Paleontologists describe human evolution as the lengthy process of change by which people originated from ape-like ancestors. But at its core, humans are inherently social creatures. Connection is why we're here. It's what gives us purpose and meaning to our lives. It doesn't matter who you talk with, the one thing that binds us is our need to belong. We need to feel connected. It's how we're wired and it's why we're here. Our early ancestors had to learn how to survive. One aspect was learning to become adaptable. Acclimating to your environment was essential for your survival. If you were not open-minded and willing to learn, you'd simply not survive. The other aspect of human survival was the ability to quickly assess between friend and foe. As generations have passed down their cultural survival techniques, they've also shared their blind spots, and we continue to apply these biases in our social networks today. Our minds make up 90% of our decisions without us even knowing it. Each day our brains are overloaded with more than 11 million pieces of information a second, and yet we can only process about 40 of them. We are wired to make cognitive shortcuts based on our internal and external factors, as well as our current perceptions. Our environment, personal needs, media, lived experience, and societal norms are just some of the factors that play into our perceptions of other people and how we view the world around us. Our unconscious mind is powerful. It can put us on autopilot, making decisions about who we associate ourselves with, who belongs, who doesn't, who we turn to for advice for, who's talented, and who we choose to listen to. Living our lives with perception filters on are harmful, and it makes it that much more difficult to overcome cultural barriers. However, we must recognize that blind spots are a part of the human condition, and our choices have consequences for both us and the people we interact with. By bringing awareness to our blind spots, we can help eliminate cultural barriers and putting people in boxes. According to a survey done by PwC, a majority of directors believe diversity positively impacts their board and company. And many studies have shown that diverse teams perform better. Companies with a higher representation of women in C-suite level positions result in 34% greater returns to shareholders. According to a Harvard Business Review article, Companies with two-dimensional diversity are 45% more likely to have captured a larger portion of the market and 70% more likely to have entered a new market within the past year. Not to mention, we need to recognize the inevitable. Projections uncover that by 2044, groups formerly seen as minorities will reach a majority status. If we are not proactively adapting and willing to learn, we will not succeed as a society. Bottom line, Diversity is good for the people, the business, and society. So how can we outsmart our unconscious minds and get past our biases to build a more inclusive community? First, let's examine our network. Who's in it? More importantly, who's not? Don't unintentionally exclude people who aren't like you. Intentionally include them. Make an effort to invite others with different experiences and perspectives into your circle. Second, be an active listener. It's one thing to hear what someone is saying. It's another to understand where they're coming from and what they truly mean. Third, start a conversation and ask questions. Get comfortable with conflicting ideologies and change. As my mother told my sisters and I each day before school, make mistakes. I didn't necessarily understand what she meant or why she wanted me to fail so badly, but she consistently told me every day, make mistakes. As I've grown older, I can appreciate what my mother said. Mistakes are not only opportunities for learning, but also a time when our brains grow. Mistakes are how people develop a better understanding of things outside their cultural norm, and they can gain respect for other cultures. Most importantly, we need to get comfortable with being vulnerable. We make everything that's uncertain certain. Conversations have gone from an exchange of ideas and information to a judgment and criticism. I'm right, you're wrong, shut up. This is what politics, social media, and everyday discourse looks like today. There's no conversation or the ability to understand. There's just a sign blame and judgment. You know how blame is described in research? It is a way to discharge pain and discomfort. And to ease this discomfort, we perfect. How we look, what we say, what we do, and where we do it. We are all trying to achieve this unattainable concept known as perfection. Who here has thought they were better than someone else at some point? I know I have, but we need to get out of this mindset that where we believe or where we believe that 
we are better than others. And with that, we are entitled to certain privileges, whether it's believing that your culture is superior to another or that your gender is more capable than the other or that you're a better person based on your religious association. We need to understand that we all have something great to offer this world. And it might look different, work differently, and sound different, but we all have something of value to bring. And with that, we need to be open and willing to understand and adapt to new ideas and approaches. Our job is not to defend and deflect, but to understand that humans are inherently imperfect and that we don't have everything right all the time. Show me a culture of people with that mindset and we'll end the problems we see today. The last way we'll overcome cultural barriers is by being compassionate. The goal is to help individuals learn that it's okay to make mistakes and be imperfect, especially when learning something new. Turns out the way people react makes that much more of a difference in whether the person continues to make an effort or if they just give up. So encourage people to exercise their brain, even if they make a mistake. I mean, some of the best things have been made by mistake. My favorite is the potato chip. Overall, it's so easy to place people in boxes, drawing lines and creating sides. There's us, and then there's them. There are those we feel comfortable around, and those we don't. There are those we share something with, and those we don't seem to share anything at all. And then there's all of us. There's no prescription or a universal procedure of the exact steps an individual should undertake or follow in their everyday interactions in order to accomplish overcoming cultural barriers. What is proven to be working, however, is that the foundation of overcoming cultural barriers is composed of respect, accountability, a compassion, a willingness to learn and make mistakes, and being vulnerable in the process of communication. These are lifelong skills that will serve us well both individually and as a community. So I ask you, do you have the courage to be imperfect?